sure. format that we're going to follow, and then uh, turn it over to you guys to to sure. fill in the blanks and do the talking. Okay. Uh, and so, the way I was envisioning doing this was start with just I'll just give a general overview of what the operation was about. Okay. Maybe take a minute or two, and then we'll go from that to you know, who, what, when, what. Okay, we want to know who you are. So okay. if you could give us about 30 seconds of your name and what your tank, what tank you were on, what, you know, what company, what platoon, what tank. And then we'll go into the actual what happened on the operation. Okay, so we'll start with just a general overview. Um, okay, are we uh, ready to go? Okay, this Operation Lamson 250 uh, started on August 14th and went through August 15th of 1967. And it involved... Uh, 68. 68. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. 68. 68. Yeah. Yeah, August uh, of 68. And it involved two platoons of tanks from... Alpha, one, one platoon from Alpha Company and one platoon from Bravo Company. And they were... Uh, in this joint operation with uh, South Vietnamese Army soldiers from the 1st and 2nd Arvin Division who went on this operation with uh, armored personnel carriers. They had no tanks. The tanks that went along were Marine Corps tanks. And it was an extremely successful operation. It's, it's sad that, that so much was accomplished and no one really heard about it but they uh, were credited with 189 NVA killed in action. The total operation was uh, something like 410, uh, but of that 410, the tankers were given credit for 189, and they uh, managed to not lose a single Marine. They didn't have a single casualty on that particular operation. They did have two tanks that hit landmines, and the Marine Retriever, Charlie 4-3, that went, them, went with them also hit a mine. But all the vehicles got back, all the crewmen got back, and so it was probably one of the most successful tank infantry operations that I ever heard of in the whole Vietnam War. So that's what I'm saying as an overall summary. And so why don't we go into uh, who you were, who you, you know, your name, what what unit you were with, and what tank you were on, etc. Harry Fiasso, uh, I was on Alpha 41, and uh, Captain Patterson was on our tank. Let's go around. Okay, uh, my name is Virgil Milton Jr., and do you just want just a brief of what it is? Yes. Just a brief of yourself. Oh, just this uh, is the who we are. Who? Uh, my name is Virgil Melton Jr. and I'm from uh, my hometown is from Canton, Texas. What what unit were you with over there? Uh, uh, Third Marine Division's uh, Alpha Company, First Platoon. Wally. My name is Wally Young. I was with Bravo Company, Third Tank Battalion, Third Marine Division. I was in 2nd Platoon with Sergeant Baldwin, and he moved to 3rd Platoon. And then I drove for him that morning of that operation at his request. And I'm not for sure if it was 2 4 or 3 4. I mean, the tank number, I don't know, because I had been on light duty for crush wound for six weeks, and he just asked me one evening to drive for him the next day, and I said, sure. Okay. Sergeant Soto. My name is Gunnery Sergeant Soto. I was there as a Lions Corporal, and I was tank commander for 2-4. 3-4. 3-4. Margo was my gunner, and uh, <clears throat> as far as that uh, overall summary, the reason they had, I found out later from Spalsbury, they had a big thing on because the Paris peace talks were going on at the time. And we had to have communication between the platoon up north and Saigon because 
no more than 44 Americans could cross the DMZ into the buffer zone, otherwise it would have been an invasion, right. which was the reason we didn't cross the Ben High. Okay. But the uh, South Vietnamese sprung an ambush, and Spalsbury, that's what Spalsbury said, do a left turn, get up on the sand Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. We just want to know who you are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then that's why I am, note, Sergeant Soto. And then we'll go to Mr. Vargo here, and then we'll go on to what happened. Uh, my name is uh, Claude Vargo. I was, uh, my nickname was Chris, uh, all during Vietnam. Uh, I was on uh, Bravo 3-4. I was a gunner uh, with Sergeant Soto as my tank commander. Uh, it was uh, Bravo Company 3rd Tanks. Okay, so that's the, the who. <clears throat> so let's talk about what happened, uh, as you recall. Uh, how did he, how, where did you start from? You know, can I just start out? So you guys written just, about this. Just start out. <laughs> oh, okay. Just uh, jump in. On, on August the 14th, uh, the first platoon was at Charlie 2. And uh, we got word that uh, we were going to go on a special operation. And uh, Captain, uh, and this is my version, everybody has a different version, uh, Captain Patterson uh, came up, and that was the first time I'd ever seen him. He hadn't been in country very long, uh, and uh, uh, he came to my take with Lieutenant. Lieutenant says, uh, uh, Captain uh, Patterson is going to use uh, Alpha 1-5 as his command post. And I said, it's fine with me. So uh, we left Charlie 2 and made our way down to Dong Ha, and then uh, the next day we farmed at Jill Lin, up at Jill Lin. And uh, then uh, that uh, early morning of the 15th, was it uh, uh, early morning of August the 15th, before sunup, we left. Now that you, you have formed up already. We had formed up Bravo. With, with, Bravo, with Bravo, although I did not know very many people, uh, any of the tankers in Bravo. I, I just no, I we, no, we didn't. Uh, we didn't know uh, we all did. be in the yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, uh, uh, we did meet each other uh, 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 shortly before we uh, left, d departed Jill Lynn. And uh, uh, of course, Captain Patterson was, was uh, the captain. He was in charge. We left with uh, two units of RVNs, uh, uh, track vehicles. And I, my remember is we left with an Army tank retriever. I know that uh, we've got there's some dispute about that, which is, which is fine. And, uh, you left with a Marine tank retriever. Yeah, it was a Lieutenant, Marine tank. Lieutenant Spalsbury okay. and Captain. Uh, but but there was a but uh, there was a uh, there was an Army retriever that went with us. Uh, I went on through. I went on all the Lamsons. So you know, I may I could be mix, mixing them up. Uh, there were three Lamsons, and I went on all of them. But uh, the next morning we uh, we formed up and. Captain Patterson was in my tank. I uh, I went to the loader, the loader position, and we took off. We were the lead tank, and the other tanks were behind us. And we tracked each other exactly along the coastline, uh, up up the South China Sea. Uh, then, uh, about sun up, almost sun up, you can see it breaking. We took uh, we took a left and headed back west and got up on top of a, a, a ridge line, which was sand. It was a ridge line of sand, and then we turned back north uh, on that ridge line. And uh, as we were traveling along, the sun kept breaking, breaking. And the, we came to uh, the end of the ridge line where the, lit, the, the, uh, the actual sand dunes ran, uh, uh, ran east, and west, and uh, down below us uh, was a, what what looked like to me uh, to be a I don't know it could be a, a couple of battalion of, of NVA down there, and they were they were cooking. You could you could smell the food, you could smell the you know you knew they were cooking because you, you you could smell the food, yeah. and. Uh, they they were very uh, they were surprised I think uh, and I was surprised 
to see uh, so many NVA in one spot. It, it, uh, to me, it looked like an old plantation. Uh, looking out over an old plantation where there used to be uh, grow stuff and things of that nature. And uh, uh, we immediately opened fire uh, with a main gun. Uh, Ronald Floyd, who was uh, uh, the gunner, uh, he, uh, we, uh, ordered him to open fire. And I did most of that because uh, Captain Patterson was on the, the lines with a, with a trying to communicate with the Arvins. And uh, as we were firing, the other tanks spread out on the ridge, on the stand ridge. Boom, 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 and we're all just like spreading out. And they were opening fire. They were down in, down in this area. So all the tanks were opening fire yeah, at the same time? Yeah, same time. As soon as, as soon as they could get in position, they were opening fire. Well, uh, Alpha 1-3 was t trying to make a, a turning and a team of, of, of uh, RPG jumped up out of a little bush there and was about to fire on him. Well, I had my M14, and I took out that, that team. I, uh, Captain Patterson put me up for a medal that, and I got a Navy accommodation for that. Yeah. So uh, 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 after that, uh, you know, he got, Alpha 13 got straightened up, and, and all the other tanks, uh, company, uh, platoon, uh, Bravo platoon, was out. I mean, we were just giving them heck, and we, and to my memory, we were knocking out some small art, some of those sort, sort of artillery pieces they had. I'm not sure if they were their 80 mortars, but it looked like they were actually some sort of a, a wheel type uh, uh, artillery pieces. But we were knocking out those, and they were trying to fire at us and 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 get their gear ready. But we had so much heavy fire down on them from all 10 tanks. I mean, we were just, you just boom, boom, boom. Those well, we started. Uh, we we uh, from Bravo three four. Uh -huh. I know I was the gunner. We had uh, we started out with canisters. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, as they started to move back towards, they they actually broke rank. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean they exactly left. Right. They, they, they were, Yeah. They they they, they, they ran in one direction and that was away from us as fast as possible. I mean they were cooking yeah. left their fires exactly left everything right. right there. Did not grab a lot of them. Didn't even grab their weapons. Others was a melee. Uh, uh, trying to fire back at us, uh, any you know, any uh, small mortars. Um, what about the South Vietnamese during this time? Were they the, doing okay? That? Captain Patterson ordered that he finally got he had communications yeah. and, uh, on, on our on through another channel on our radio, and he had gotten he told them to flank. They went, uh, they formed out and went uh, to the west, to the west, and he told them to flank. He said, flank, flank them, flank the unit. So they peeled out to the west and went around and then went on down uh, and flanked them to the west and drove them east uh, uh, to the coast. Towards the coast. Towards the coast. They drove, drove them in. And, of course, we moved forward and we just boxed them in. And we just bam, bam. And, and, and uh, you know, the, uh, we call, uh, Captain Patterson called a one Huey came in. You remember the Huey that came in? No, I was, of course, I was a gunner. I was in, okay. You was in the deal. Uh, you know, one one, busy, one you know. Huey came in and started man started planting them too. You know, and mm -hmm. and he used all his right. That's the only Huey that came in. He used up his minutes. He left. Well, we were still in pursuit. We we still went on down. Was going towards. You know, you could see the Ben Ha River. You know, from our for, from our vantage point, mm -hmm. and uh, we just uh, squeezed them into a a, a, a just a. a a kill range, yeah. just squeezed them in, and, and, and you're right, they panicked. Uh, they, they panicked and started started running, and, and we just, uh, you know, we was, uh, as fast as we could uh, uh, load the, the gun, the main guns, and, and the 30 caliber, and, and whatever we had to shoot, well, we were... Yeah, we, we were, were, yeah, we were uh, firing then direct fire beehives, yeah. darts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, direct yeah. fire. You I want to explain what be be they beehive, is a, a beehive. beehive is a small dart, about an inch, inch and a quarter. Uh, well, they're called flechettes, too. What's that? Flechettes. 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 Yeah, flechette or, you know, French run. Uh, and, of course, I was on, uh, Sergeant Soto was on the 50, 50 caliber on top? No. Thir what did you have on top? Because I was firing, I must have had a... We had it reversed. 
you had a 50 caliber on top and we had a 30 caliber on the bottom. All tanks had 50 caliber. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 it was coax. The 30 was coax. Yeah, the 30 was coax. And the, and the 50 was... But uh, you, had an, you had another 30 caliber on top, didn't you? Yeah. You had another 30, he had another 30 caliber. We, uh, we had... Two, three. And the coax was a 50 caliber. Yeah. So oh, so really? No. Huh? No. Uh, you had a 30 caliber as well? Yeah, all okay. tanks have coax 30. Okay. I know. I, I like. Uh, I'd like to hear uh, Gunny's uh, Gunny Soto. Gunny, could you uh, share what you recall about that? Uh, well, as I told you a while ago, uh, I found this out later because I served with Spalsbury later on. And he told me he gave me the, he played the he gave me the tape recording of it, oh, and yeah. I still have it. And he was in communication with Saigon because it was determined then that not more than 44 Americans could cross the, the Ben High, otherwise it would have been an invasion. Right. And that's why they were looking out for us, okay? And uh, as far as we knew that, we didn't know that. I'll I, just I, talk I, about I, that's the first I've heard of that. Yeah, me too. That's and, the first uh, I've heard of that. It's uh, a good piece of information. Though. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I, I have the recording, you know, and uh, they, you could hear the transmissions coming from Saigon to him uh, to ensure once you get in the buffer zone to inform this headquarters, you know, and why they were. I didn't find that out until the 1980s before he died yeah. when he gave it to me, you know, and. Uh, but it was about that time that Wagon and Blakemore had a mine, you know, and uh, the next thing I think it was a set of road wheels flying through the air. It was Wagon Sank. And uh, as he told you, he was my gunner, and I was looking through the occluder knob. I could see them running into each other in the cook fires, you know. And he, I was asking him if he could see the same thing, mm -hmm. and he said, yeah, it blow them away. You know, and so I said, blow my way first with a shift, you know. Right. But I was putting it on muzzle action, you know. And uh, then I started firing HE, but I was putting those on delay. And I was hitting the back side of the, uh, of the berm and let it blow up over there and let the shrapnel hit them, you know. Any idea, estimate of how far away they were at? They were approximately the, anywhere between 1,100 and 1,200 yeah. meters. Okay. It's, uh, when we first pulled up, they were right down, uh, right down in uh, on the, the other side of the ridge, because that's where the RPG team popped up uh, for uh, and tried to take out uh, Alpha One Three. Mm -hmm. They were just right down there, okay. and then as we got up there and started firing, uh, uh, I mean, ten tanks. Firing 90 millimeters as fast as you can throw in, we we put out some fire. Okay. Uh, well, we had 610 rounds that we know of. Yeah, exactly. Right? See, we couldn't turn 620 around. rounds. Yeah. That we know of. I remember telling Blakemore saying, we could not turn around, head towards head east towards the water, because two days prior, B-52s had dropped, tank and I sent us and then I sensitive mine, uh -huh. so they knew that. That those mines were approximately no more than 50 yards behind us, so we knew we couldn't turn turn back on that. There's only one way to go. That was west. Okay, so if there was any place to move, it would be west, and that's when we started circling. And the tanks on my left, I was the center tank, started and we started making like a semicircle, and we caught them down there on the bottom. And I just told Michael, wipe them out. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, it was what a, we did. It was a massacre. But, uh, <laughs> Sounds like. Uh, I, I tell you what, that particular day, remind, I, I was in country for 42 months, man. Reminds me more than any other time because I'd been drinking all day. Mm -hmm. But on the way back after Waggle and Blackmore had a mine, I remember opening up the beer and I was drinking, and I looked down from the TC's cupola and I seen a spider hole, but it was empty. There was nobody there. But something told me anybody could have been in there. They could have blown my brain up. 
And I threw away the beer can, and I didn't drink no more that week, you know. <laughs> but I remember that particular day, not for the firefighter to think, because of that beer drinking, you know. Because, yeah. you know, the wall box by the gunner seat? Yeah. I, he can tell you, I used to keep that full of beer. <laughs> not, not ammo, I keep it full of beer. Exactly. And uh, uh, that particular day, I would just talk, pop a top, and they'd pop a top and give me one, you know. But that particular day, I remember looking down and I seen the spider <laughs> hole, but there was no one in there. But it scared me so bad that I gave up drinking for the rest of the week. Do, does anybody remember uh, the rockets afterwards? Coming back? The, the, oh, yeah. The, 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 the yeah, came yeah, in, yeah. Uh, was a one hit the back of our tank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, Directly uh, and, on the uh, ricocheted, ricocheted off, huh. yeah, and, and sprayed shrapnel, I, I assume, uh, uh, you know, everywhere else. But a uh, uh, couple of the tanks hit mines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One three did. And, and, yeah. um, one one and one three. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody in Bravo Company. No. Uh, no. no none of those hit, uh, uh, hit mines, but we did have a, a rocket. Uh -huh. um, and I, you know, I didn't know if it was yeah. artillery or rockets. To be, no. you know, to, be, to begin with, but uh, for, I was a case on for uh, five months, uh, so it was more, uh, and I know it couldn't be direct fire artillery because there was nothing yeah. high above yeah. to, to, to fire right. down, so, so it had to be it was just a lucky shot on their part. Well, uh, they fire. did, they did <laughs> martyr, they did shoot, we, we had mar 80 martyr, uh, 80 millimeters, they shot martyrs at us. Yeah, I remember bouncing hit 82s. 82s. Yeah. Uh, they, they come in with those before we, we took most of those out, but they did get off some, some martyr rounds and uh, they, I can remember, uh, they did, uh, they took their martyr plates and, and strapped them on their gun, and they were running uh, with, with some of those. Some of them left them in place. But uh, they went into, uh, as we was pushing them, they tried to hide every, every place they could. Uh, but as we were going along, we took out bunkers, too, uh, if you can remember. Uh, if we seen a bunker, you know, we'd just unload a couple of HE in there and then going, and, going go on and, and uh, several of those bunkers, you, you know, it, you had secondary exposure. Well, exposure. I was taking out trees too. Yeah, trees and everything, you know, Entire just uh, because they, they, they ran in some uh, thick brush. We, we squeezed them into that thick brush and then it was just a, mm. you know, you just fired uh, into that brush and, and everything. But, but let me tell you. Uh, on that recording that I was telling you that I have, also on that recording is Hanoi Hannah's, uh, where she repeated the numbers of the tanks, you know, oh, by, yeah. by, by using the number, you know, alpha one, you know, two, three, and uh, she called out all the tank numbers, you know. Yeah. That's mostly why Smallberry gave it to me, you know. To Maybe uh, we, you can explain a little bit about Hanoi Hannah because the other folks wouldn't know what you're talking about. Well, let me tell you, when we went across the Quaviet again, not Quaviet, uh, was it the Quaviet River? Yeah. Uh, when we went back into the other next square, uh, Hanoi Hannah was already on the radio talking about how uh, yeah. we had uh, killed so many people on Ben High. I have that recorded, you know. She, she already knew about it. You know, uh, uh, we call it. Uh, Hanoi Hannah was like uh, uh, Tokyo Rose during World War II. Two, yeah. And uh, we used to listen to her at Kason. You all ever hear Jane Fonda talk on there? Uh, <coughs> no. I did. Uh, no, it was Hanoi Hannah. No, I, I, yeah. I, I would have remembered that. Uh, yeah, but sure. we used to listen to Hanoi Hannah because she had the, she had the latest tunes. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, our armed forces, Ra forces, armed forces uh, radio had everything six months old. Yeah, yeah, we listened <laughs> so, to it too. So I'd like to ask uh, when you get done though, yeah. uh, Harry hasn't yeah. had a chance to pitch in. Yeah. Well, I remember the tanks hitting the mines on the way back. You know, I, after we left, I thought, "Dude, we got her made." You know, and then when we were heading back, boom. Yeah. And boom. Oh, it's, holy shit! I thought, "Here that we go. Just, we're on the way home." That, and that was outside of Joe Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. How many rounds do you think they fired at us? Uh, uh, on our way out? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Gosh, I don't know. Uh, um, it was a it was a big uh, it was a big flurry because I thought I was back in case on yeah there, with rockets. You know. I know that uh, even though uh, mm -hmm. when Captain Patterson ordered ordered us to wrap everything up, 
it was late in the evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started heading back and we started taking some rocket fire from the sand dunes on further west. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can remember, you know, they were, you know, back uh, on west there was some, some sand dunes. And I know we fired it. We fired at those, and then uh, Sergeant Myers, that's when he, uh, I don't know if you guys can remember this, but uh, Sergeant Myers actually captured an NVA. He captured an NVA. He, he seen one in some bushes uh, not too far when we turned around, and the guy came out with it, the NVA come out with his hands up like that, and, and he surrendered to, uh, to <laughs> Sergeant Myers' tank, Alpha 1-4, and Myers uh, blindfolded him, and and uh, and uh, tied his hands up and took him back on the back of the tank. Took it, took him, took him back. Of course, uh, I I uh, I recollect that the the, the army retriever uh, out there with us hit a mine on the way back, and it was so bad uh, that uh, we fired uh, rounds into it to further disable it, and then we called uh, napalm strike in on that. I know you're, well, there's some, uh, there's, see there's some, some conflict on information there right. because the official records say it was uh, uh, Charlie 43, H&S yeah. Company right. Green Retriever that hit the mine. Yeah. And, but they also you encountered an abandoned guy. army <clears throat> retriever out in there because the army had been operating out in that area. And so before, in fact, that's one of the reasons for this operation was because uh, our higher ups in Third Marine Division wanted to go out there in force and clean that area out because the army that was there had had run into some rough going. They even abandoned the retriever, and so uh, there's some discrepancy with yeah. uh, Virgil saying that there was an army retriever that went with this, and the records say it was well. I've talked to Dan, uh, Captain McQuarrie, a couple times, and he was on the retriever. And I believe Spalsbury was on the retriever. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, he was on a tank. He was he on a tank? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, do you guys have any do remember? Do y'all remember uh, firing on the, the Army retriever and disabling it more? We surrounded it, kind of, like a moonshade? I don't remember. No. McQuarrie, but you, McQuarrie, you were there three no, times. But, but I, yeah. I, see, I was only up on that one time. Not that, not then, but I think uh, in uh, the spring of the next year, 1969, uh -huh. I fired on that. Okay. Uh, that uh, that retriever. Yeah. Uh, but it was it had already been like it was burned out, rusted. You yeah. couldn't tell. You couldn't tell. Well, what what, what, what query said was that they found this abandoned army retriever and looked it over. And decided that they better blow it in place, and so. But he didn't describe how they blew it in place. And uh, Milton remembers firing some rounds into it and then having napalm drop on yeah. it. And that's, you guys have any re recollection? Yeah. The uh, uh, and you know that there was three lamsons. Yeah. That could have been another the one. second lamson, which was on the nineteenth. Right. You know there was there was a. Uh, uh, what was the name of those lumps? One of the lumps on the one actually went into the uh, square. The other lump. one was just up by the bit high. The other one was up around the next square, around Contin. Right. Okay. Hill, Hill 56. Yeah. Uh, lumps on 250, 263, and 271. Yeah. I think I must have been on a different one than y'all were on. Well, and you may have be because there was three yeah, different yeah, yeah, Lamsons down there. They told us yeah, that uh, we had uh, four to seven hundred kill, and there yeah. never was a chopper. Yeah, there were two jets that come in. Yeah, there were no. We no, wasn't no. up on the ridge line. We were down below the sand dune, yeah. and we we forded the river. Now, did y'all ford the river? No, we forded the river. I was under understanding it was a Ben Hall River. No, they didn't yeah. ford the Ben. No, 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 we, we didn't, didn't ford the Ben. Uh, no, no, we forded the river. <clears throat> Uh, okay, maybe you were on that particular. But a 271 would have been later. No, they were eating breakfast. Because I know there was a Lamson 750 yeah, that's that same. was uh, uh, very much later, like in 1974, yeah. uh, where the the, the uh, South Vietnamese got their ass kicked bad. Yeah. Hey, there's Re some, really bad. 
there's some more information in the command chronology about uh, uh, seeing some boats. Oh yeah, shooting up some boats out in we the. We did Indian fire Hall. some boats. And we fired some a, boats. Was a, in a trucks. sapper training place where they're a frogman training center or something that got blown up. And some it. trucks, also. Do you guys have any memory of that? I tried to get rid of the bridge, too. Uh, I remember us shooting the boats. I do, too, in the trucks. I remember the shooting the truck, oh. blowing the trucks. I remember yeah. the truck burning mm -hmm. as we were leaving. And you, uh, Gunny, so you remember the boats that were in the water? I remember boats, uh, shooting boats. Uh, Jack Anderson was the troop commander then. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, it was just very brief, you know. Maybe 20, 30 minutes, that's about it. Yeah, they didn't give us any recognition for any, that I can recall, mm -hmm. for any kills or anything, you know. No, but it's in the command chronology that you sunk, uh, yeah. sunk some boats and, yeah. tr and blew up some trucks. And uh, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I sunk those boats. Um, also, it was... Um, Matter of fact, <laughs> Sergeant Major Person was my platoon sergeant. Yeah. Barney Pearson, when we were shooting at those boats. Oh, yeah. Easier. Uh, he didn't uh, <clears throat> when I asked for everybody from that operation, he didn't step forward. Maybe he didn't hear me or something. He probably didn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> but like I say, we were down below the sand dune. Y'all must have undoubtedly been to the east, and I was the furthest to the west. Sergeant Baldwin was not the lead tank. When we pulled up on line, so we started balling, had everybody make a hard right, mm -hmm. and we pulled up on top of the sand dune, and there they were, and we fired, we fired less than five or six rounds, 90 apiece. Sergeant Baldwin said, seize fire on them 90, eat them up with the 50s, and that's what we did. No, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were yeah, we had a Free fire zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, no, no, we were in a free fire zone too. Yeah. No, no, I know, but I mean, we were free to fire. Yeah, it didn't everywhere. matter what we, we were just were. throwing everything that. Yeah, uh, all yeah, I'm yeah. saying is we was close enough to yeah. use a fifty. Right. Don't waste a ninety. Y'all fired over six hundred rounds. Bravo Company didn't fire over twenty or twenty five okay. rounds. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I right know that because I was on ball and tank. Well, you you're yeah. right to assume probably another operation. It yeah, yeah. And here and, and, and here it is. Here's the other operation on October the twenty third. 1968. No, in August. Well, there was one in August too. Uh, th this one in is August. Uh, no, this was in September. There was one in August, September, and in October. The one in uh, September was Lom Som 263 with the Second Arvin Regiment. We had Moving into the DMZ, the Morning Company A provided base fire for the Arvin's infantry and made contact with enemy and. Uh, heavy inflicted uh, heavy damage inflicted to the enemy credit was 73 NVA kill. Yeah, we killed four or five hundred and said okay. it the most North Vietnamese ever killed by any tank yeah. unit in the entire Vietnam War. And then the one in October is a Lam Som uh, 271. Uh, that was that involved the uh, elements of the 1st Battalion the 44th Artillery United States Army. Uh, that was when they had some uh, equipment uh, up there, they, and during during that one, uh, they, they followed uh, the coastline up to the Ben Ha River again, and I was on that one, uh, and uh, they got uh, 63 in Bay was killed, and bunkers and emplacement was killed. That's all in. The, That's what you call target rich environment. Yeah, yeah. 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 they didn't so, learn their lesson the first time. So, so After we fired all our rounds, we started wide open down there where they was at. We were going to take a body count. And two jets come flying over, and they were, I don't know how many was killed, but how many did you say? 70, 30, yeah, yeah. 170? Well, uh, there was a lot more than that, what I've seen laying there, because we were close enough to see the yeah. bodies. And two jets had come over, and there ain't never been no chopper come across there. But two jets come over, and they radioed down and got up with Baldwin and wanted his grid coordinates and asthma. They wanted to know exactly where he was on the map, and when he told them, they said, well, right now you're in the biggest minefield the United States has got up in. Nobody's supposed to be up here at all. They got mines up in to blow them tanks bottom side up, and you're right in the middle of it right now. Uh, yeah. We had to drive a mile in any direction to get out of it, and we had a six-by with us, 
and all we had was about 25 Army soldiers. We picked up four tanks left Camp Carroll about three or four o'clock in the morning. We went somewhere up there around y'all there, Quaviet or whatever, and we picked up three tanks from Alpha Company. And then we left with the, when we got the Arvin soldier, mm -hmm. we forded the river, we went up there, and like I said, we was going along behind the dune, I suppose, and he pulled up and he said, eat them up, wolf pack. And everybody started opening up with 90 millimeter, and by the time they fired no more than four to five rounds apiece, he said, seize fire on them 90s and eat them up with the 50s. Okay. And that's yeah. all that was fired. And then we took off towards them, and then uh, that's the rest of it. Okay, when you, uh, the tanks uh, were going to head back, uh, do you remember and recall, I know two, two Alpha tanks, Alpha 1-1 one, one, Alpha 1-3 hit mines, and the Retriever hit a mine. Do you guys have any recollection of, of how you ended up going into that minefield by Joe Lynn? Or? I know I that's where the rockets really started, though. I know, no, we did. Those mines were hit on the yeah. way back. Yeah, on the way back, as you guys back. were coming back. And yeah. right before they got to the Quabbin River. Okay. And uh, that's when they hit the mines. Uh, we never the first one that hit the mine was Waggle's tank. Right. We, I think he, he would have been on 1-3. And I'm that checks out. That, what tank was that checks there. out with the command chronology. And, uh, that, uh, that, that's that when we started taking... That, right. that checks out. <clears throat> and then the next one was Alpha 1-1. One, one. That was Blakemore. Blakemore, yeah. In, in, in order for us to get back in place, uh, before we could form our single file line again, we came from all different directions. And that's when we started hitting the, the mines, uh, is trying to get formed back up into the, the same uh, col yeah, uh, column. column. That, but that's when we started taking... The, the, the rockets start coming in. Uh, we were taking, yeah, uh, some RPGs in the beginning, some light mortars, and then it got it to be some heavy mortars, probably from the other side of the DMZ. And then when we stopped the column, when they, when uh, Alpha hit the mines, that's when we started taking in some serious rockets. So that must have been pretty hairy trying to get out there and. Get the get the tanks. Yeah. Oh yeah, fixed yeah. up. Trying to, move to get, get them while you're taking back in, together, while you're yeah. taking incoming. Okay, I had a, I, I think I, I had heard on, and I don't know if it was that operation on the radios because it was I mean, right behind me, and so it was on the radios as well that uh, they were sending down an anti-tank battalion uh, for us, and I, I, and I don't know if it was that operation or not. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't. Line. Do you remember anything on that? Yeah. But, um, when we got ready to leave out of there, we had that sick fight. That man, that truck driver, volunteered. They sandbagged his truck up good, and he led the way. None of our tanks hit a mine coming out. No, Bravo's, none of Bravo's. Yeah. No Bravo's. That's all I know. We didn't hit no mines. Hit mine. mines coming out when I went there. Yeah. Time. Hit the mines. The only thing I remember is after we crossed the Quaviet, came down how Woody was waiting for us. And Spalsbury called him up and told him to fill up the 55 gallon drum full of beer. And that's exactly what he had waiting for us out in the tank park. Woodward? Gunny uh, Woodward? Uh, yeah. Gunny oh, Woodward? Yeah. Uh, you might mention, uh, Jim, let's see, we, well, that, what award were we given? A, uh, yeah, I Vietnam, was told, Vietnamese cross I was told by Captain McQuarrie that that everybody on that operation was authorized for a Vietnamese cross of gallantry with Palm. With that Palm. there was a, an Arvin yeah. lieutenant colonel that lined up people and was what no citations, no paperwork, just handing them. Now did that happen? I never, I never, I never get I never, no. No. Spons no. Spons no. Spons no. Spons no. told no. me that because there was an army operation, the an citations operation. were gonna given out to the army, not to us. Oh. Oh, really? Is that right? that, but uh, subse but subsequent operation? subsequently, we were recognized for that. Yeah. yeah. So there, and I'll tell you somebody that did. How, how were we recognized? Yeah. Uh, well, as, as a cr I'm always uh, well, I don't know. I've got. I've got well, there was a meritorious unit citation. Oh yeah, that's right. There was a meritorious okay. unit citation. But no. But there's, let me tell um, you something, okay? Yeah. I gotta get off my chest. Between me and God, 
we both know that that day we Americans killed more North Vietnamese than Carter's got bills. I know that. Yeah. Yet nobody talked about it. Cause not that many. Oh, there was only 44 of us. Nobody here. Were there. Nobody was given anything. Nothing. Somebody was given something. Not some. even a pat on the back. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was but back. I in, know. I was back in Dong Ha at the time. And well, the man. I was XO of Alpha at the time. And I remember hearing guys come back and saying, yeah, we got a Vietnamese cross of gallantry. Yeah. Well, the driver right. that was supposed to be driving my tank did get that. Yeah. But I didn't get it. No, I, I don't remember of any of my, of my uh, fellow tankers in... in I first just remember orally afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I saw yeah. nothing in writing. Yeah. It, was, no. it was people talking about Matter it. Matter of fact, I didn't even know it had been written about it until Senator Cohn sent me a book writing about it. Because that day, the day that we came back from operation is the day he got orders to come back to the States. And he was the company XO. That was me. That was him. Okay. <laughs> you're, the, you're the one that sent me the book. Yeah. And, and uh, that's all I heard about That's it. why I didn't go on the operation, because I was, I, was, yeah. I was this short. <laughs> okay. Or I would have been I'll out look, there I'll, with I'll, look, I'll look that up, because... Uh, well, McQuarrie did get written up for a Bronze Star, but it never, he never got it. But he did get a Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. I, I, I never. No. I, I were, did got my, I got my medal. You, but you didn't get the Bronze Star. No. no I got well, I got the Navy commendation. Yeah. But with, they, with Combat V. But I have. Fosbury should have gotten something. Yeah. He's the one who was leading it all. Yeah. And oh, yeah, well, you know, if it hadn't yeah. been for him, I still remember it was uh, three or four o'clock in the morning, and he went by all the tanks, said, Turn your kettle lights on. And we turned them on, said, Follow the tank in front of you when we crossed the Quaviet. And then all of a sudden, he said, Do a hard left and get up on top of the sand dunes. Yeah, I did. We got up on top right of the sand and we caught the whole yeah. damn regiment down the bottom. So it was, he should have gotten something. Yeah, know? he should have gotten something. Patterson yeah, should have got something. Yeah, way more than 170 or something, too. Yeah. Patterson should have got something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. There was 400 and some, some odd, but well, one just the one we were credited with. Who got who? Who else was credited well, the Arvin, with the other ones? The total with Arvin's. Oh, and yeah. the, yeah. the Arvin's yeah. got, there's they, no. They counted 410 or 420. Yeah, there's no way in hell. And they credited yeah. the tanks with 189. That, that so, we got, no. We got more than that. The official 399 tanks. Officially you know, credited. Officially okay. accredited the record state the that record. we got 189 KIA, and you know that's not true. Mm -hmm. We got no, more, more way more than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 70 KIAs probable and a total confirmed of 421 KIAs. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we got most of them because. Oh, sure. Uh, sure. Sounds like it. I never saw Arvin's in, 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 in front of us. Our Arvin's. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah. the, the, you, the, the only yeah. thing Arvin's they did is they run. The they, 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 they did run. They did help turn, shoot, them, turn them right in. Turn them right into us. Yeah. They did help turn them right into us. And but they didn't. No, they didn't do much. The Twenty-five troops we had. The Arvin was able when we started firing. They jumped off the tanks and hid behind the tank. Oh, That's okay. all they did. Uh, the official ammunition count too was uh, uh, tanks fired 126 plus rounds of HE, 34 rounds of Beehive, 20 rounds of canister, 21,675 rounds of 30 caliber, 2,000 rounds of 50 caliber. And in IPA, these figures are very conservative because yeah. we were empty, empty. when uh, we come back yeah. to, to GLN. We didn't have any ammo left. Yeah. Yeah. You had asked, uh, Sergeant Soto had asked me for, for a count, you know, because he's, he's you seeing, know, you know, I'm down there and uh, we're looking to see what's left in the racks. And I says, oh, shit. Now I got to get down there with a toothbrush and clean all that stuff that we've never seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where all that mud stacked up and the, the dirt stacked up. Yeah. And how far do y'all say you were from them when you uh, opened fire? About 5,000 meters. We must yeah. have been closer to y'all, though. What's, what's the range on a 50 caliber? Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Nine to twelve hundred meters, the best yeah. I can remember. Why didn't y'all shoot them with the fifties? Well, we were opened up with everything yeah. we yeah. had. Yeah, we, we opened up with too, it. but we didn't need nothing but the fifties. That's yeah. why we come back with tank loads yeah. of ammo when y'all yeah. was empty. We didn't <laughs> fire over twenty-five and thirty rounds. All four Bravo yeah. tanks combined. Okay, I was sitting right there online. Yeah, with gentlemen, them. I think we're getting close to okay our time. So yeah. if you have All any right. last last minute comments or anything you'd like to add that we didn't cover now is your chance i would just like to add i'm glad to meet the other guys that, yeah. that was out there uh on there's uh, i wish eddie myers could have been here yeah. eddie myers uh, you know eddie yeah uh great tank commander he's in poor health has heart problems but uh he just couldn't do you want to mm -hmm. name, let us name uh, any of the other tankers that we yes. know that were on yeah. that? Uh, if, Dale, you, if you remember Dale any Sanford, other names. Dale Sanifer, uh Marty Lenson. Was there a Doherty? Uh, he was Sergeant a T Doherty? Yeah. Yes, he was a TC. Yeah, I've heard his name. Um, uh, uh, Haley Morale. What was he? Um, on John, on uh, Doherty's tank uh, w would have been um, Haley and Morale and uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you that other name. Okay. Uh, Bosco. Ba Basco. Basco. I've heard his name. Yeah. Who was on uh, Who was on Sergeant Baldwin's tank besides yourself? I can't remember. Okay. Now he subsequently got. Right. Seriously, he got seriously wounded about oh, four yeah. days Oh, yeah, I know later. he got hit with three pieces of shrapnel yeah. on the side of the beer can. I saw him, he gave me my shoes when I got back to Okinawa when yeah. I went home. But no, we had no casualties during no. Lamb's no. to no. That's really amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, I got like some of my guys on the meet you. I read yeah. some of your uh, stuff. Uh, hey, man, Eddie I'm, Myers. I've been wanting to meet you uh, a lot. Okay. I like that stuff you wrote about K. Bill Swisher. Oh, okay. Bill Swisher was KIA in you. January. I come out there and pull John out, out of fear, everything. Uh, yeah. Dan Koloski. That's where I slammed the loader yeah. badge on that finger right there. Do you know? We call him Slobski. I remember you. You know I do now. Oh, yeah. You remember Chico, don't you? Oh, yeah. Everybody knew Chico. That little monkey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he rode on your tank most of the time. You, that's oh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he go I, out with you and not Bale come back? was probably he there. Oh, Albert? Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he, was, he was, was there. Was he, he's he's not a kind of yeah. come well, you know what? Uh, he can't remember anything anymore. Bert? Yeah, I heard Bert he was on, remember. out there on the gun too when they run into something. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he just, but he could, have been, he, could have been, he could have been. He could have been there. Bert could have been there. Okay, I think that. Well, I wish all our operations would have went as good as that one, though. Well, it's, uh, she says we got a few more minutes, so uh, okay. if there's anything else we want to talk about. Well, I would, I would know. I mean, I apologize for not being able to remember the other crew members that were with me, but like I said, I'd just come off a of light duty and Sergeant Baldwin just asked me and uh, that evening, late that afternoon, and I said, yeah, I'll drive for you because I'm ready to go. I, Sergeant Baldwin was over 2nd Battalion before he went to Kalu. I mean, mm -hmm. and I was down there with him, but I was I in the 2nd Battalion. I got you. I always drove for the lieutenant after Baldwin left. <laughs> but, uh, Which lieutenant? Uh, Lou Bly. I see. Okay. And, uh, the uh, the things I remember, they, they're the same. I mean, they were eating breakfast, you know. And, uh, but I think the casualty count was way higher. And uh, whether y'all fired 90s and we fired 50s doesn't matter. I'm not trying to yeah. degrade any one of y'all's <laughs> tank performance or whatever. We might not even been on the line. Well, I know we've crossed the river. Well, there, 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 was several, there were several operations. Yeah. Uh, in, but in, it had to be, so. like he said, it was in well, August. What might explain why you thought there was a higher casualty count is because... No, I they, know there was. Uh, we drove of, close enough to see the bodies down. escorted and moved and moved their casualties out so that when... No, they didn't have time did to move them out. Are we off? Are we off there? No, we're still oh. on. No, we so whoever did the counting, they, that's what they counted, but that doesn't mean that's all you got. Oh, I understand what you're saying now. I mean, I know what was laying there when we got close enough to see bodies. No, 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 the no, there is one over. thing, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, we got more KIAs than, oh, than yeah, the Army. No doubt. No doubt. No oh, doubt. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I wish oh, Ken yeah. Baldwin would have been here. I don't know. He's yeah. from Corpus Christi. I don't know why he didn't ride up there. And, and, and you know what? I will say that I think every tank came back with some sort of, had got hit either with shrapnel, martyr shrapnel, or small, wrong. small uh, rockets or something had some dents and what have you in it. We but. saw the, yeah, we saw where it hit in the back but didn't see any shrapnel because that thing came in like so so low. Yeah. It was after when the when the Alpha hit the mines and it, the arc on it, you know, it wasn't a mortar that would have had yeah, shrapnel exactly everywhere. Right. It was it was deflected like that because, you know, uh, we heard it sounded like a sludge hammer. Wham! But, uh, you know, a glance. Maybe y'all should have done like we did. <laughs> I would like I would uh, like the third tank back coming out now. Like I say, we had the sick by the guy volunteered to lead, you know, in case mm -hmm. we hit a mine. All right. Uh, who was the driver? You drove? For what? You drove out? You, you drive one of the tanks hit the mine? No, no. He okay, was, well, the way, I, he, okay no, the way I did. No, he was a blade. He was a. Oh, he had the blade. blade he had the blade, blade tank. tank. That's right. He was a tank. Uh, you wouldn't tank him out of the blade yeah, tank. I think yeah, I remember seeing tank. the blade tank yeah. somewhere yeah. At that time. But what I did is, like I say, I was the third tank coming out with Bravo Company because there were two tanks in front of me and I was watching them very close. And if they were from here to that camera and and I mean, I didn't count the end connectors turning or nothing like that, but I know exactly where that tank turned, how much he turned, and I did exactly what he done. And that's why, because I didn't want to hit no mine. So I watched that tank ahead of me, and if he done this, when I got there, I done this. There's no doubt in my mind that this was probably one of the greatest tank uh, battles uh, uh, in, in the Vietnam history. Uh, I just a lot of pen, a lot of pent up demand. Uh, and the reason from, I will yeah, add yeah, from, I mean, from a lot of stuff. I, stuff I would had. like Even to from add from from Contian. Uh, 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 so it was it was our time to kick some ass. Yeah, I mean, I we, would like uh, to add no, one no thing doubt, man. This was a, uh, uh, of course it did. It never was like Sergeant Soto said. Never nothing was never said about, about it. About it. Yeah. Nothing was never said about it. See, but I went home right afterwards. I went. I reported in Camp Lejeune. Yeah. And I was second tanks, and and I met the battalion commander, who was Lieutenant Colonel Saul, and I was I said, did you did you guys hear about what we did on uh, yeah. Operation Lamb Song yeah. 250? Yeah. Nope. Did yeah. anybody have that? Did you, did, did, are, <laughs> you in, are you in receipt of the article that my wife cut out of the paper, the Houston Chronicle? No. I'll send that to you. I don't. Uh, well, what's, fact, what's it about? It's about the operation, Lamson oh, 250. Gosh, well, send it. Send, send it to both of us. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got it. Because uh, uh, I wrote an article, uh, uh, and uh, it was published in the, I don't know if y'all take the breach block. Yeah. The yeah, breach I block. Read this I read it. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I read yeah, it. Yeah. I don't get it on yes. paper. Okay. okay. I read it on the so, Okay. But we want to uh, get an article in the sponsored box. Here. And, uh, uh, Virgil has agreed to write something to get published about it in the sponsor box. Okay. Do any of y'all have any idea how we managed to slip up on that many goops sitting there eating breakfast? I, I Intel know the answer. Intelligence. Myself. G4. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, you want me to tell I, you? Yeah, I was surprised they didn't hear us coming, you know. I mean, no, I can tell you, I know. It's the damn because quietest things. Yeah. Their intelligence. Don't, don't call, I'll try to sell you something. But, okay. Uh, you can't okay. really sneak up on anybody with They thought tanks. they were their own <laughs> no. tanks, is what it was. Because yeah. they were just beginning to use, North send, Vietnamese were starting to use tanks, and they thought it was their email. own tank. Probably so. That's where we were given. Probably so. And so that's why they yeah, didn't, that's why they didn't there, panic. Uh, the north of uh, uh, I, feel got, we, I feel like we were blessed. <laughs> to yeah, we were send me an email. I'm going to send it to you anyway. Because I'm gonna, Jim, I'm going to send you the... Uh, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you Only, very much. Yes, this was fantastic. Okay, well, you bet, yeah. brother.